there is only one one thing left we need to talk about in this mass vaccination well remember in during natural core co during the natural course of a pandemic i was saying the third wave is caused by the fact that people become again susceptible and that the virus can again go back from the uh, people who used to have a good innate immunity to people who were, became seropositive after the first wave. So, but what happens if you now prevent those people who were infected and got the disease during the first wave, if you prevent them from having declining antibody types? What happens, in other words, if you immunize these people, like we have been doing at least in, in a, a lot of European countries, we have started with immunizing the vulnerable people. So these people, due to vaccination, have now long-lived antibody titers, and you know the virus just cannot get in because they are, to some extent, protected. And they are protected maybe, and we know this, against the variant strains, we know that uh, shedding is taking place and that the vaccines cannot prevent uh, these uh, highly infectious strains from being shed. But that is not the most interesting scenario for the virus, as I was saying. The, for the virus, in order to ensure its perpetuation, it is critical that it can make these people ill. Because if you make the people ill, being a virus, you will ensure you know, very strong and a long-lived uh, vir viral shedding. And that is, that is needed, uh, frankly speaking, to, uh, for the virus to uh, continue or to ensure its, uh, its perpetuation. Now, if you prevent this, and to some extent we are still preventing it just quite recently, as Jean-Pierre Jean -Pierre showed, that we have now even some strains where we have only like 20, 30% of efficacy against disease, but uh, so far, we still had some protection against, uh, against the disease. And so the virus was not really, you know, doing very much in terms of ensuring its perpetuation in the vaccinated people. So then it has no choice, but it has to stay with the younger people. But there the reservoir got almost exhausted of people that po potentially could get a disease. So what it, is it going to do? it is going to increase in the, its infectiousness because when it increases its infectiousness and i was saying the condition is there because these people are now with increasing infection rate uh, increasingly exposed to reinfection with the virus while they are having uh, suboptimal antibody titers and so the virus can escape and the virus will increase its infectiousness and by increasing its infectiousness I mean, people, you know, will become more susceptible. So their natural antibodies get suppressed. That is during natural infection. But now by increasing its infectiousness, it can make these people much more susceptible. So it will take a bigger part of the younger population just by increasing its infectiousness. And that is what we are seeing right now. The virus has to stay with the younger people and, and you know, the wave of disease in the younger people uh, must increase in order for, for the virus to uh, ensure its perpetuation. And so that is where uh, the vaccination is uh, uh, starting to have dramatic effects. And people say, well, you know, no, no, no. And, and the reaction is, of course, oh, wow, these vaccines protect elderly people. Look, I mean, there is less hospitalization, there's fewer hospitaliz hospitalizations, they don't get severe disease. So what we need to do is to vaccinate the younger people. I mean, this is just going to be a catastrophe because we see already that the virus is escaping all the time to the antibody responses. So frankly speaking, it's just a matter of days or weeks till we have full resistance Yes, resistance against those vaccines, also in terms of protecting against disease. And what's happening then is that folks who got vaccinated, you know, they can simply throw their antibodies in the bin, their vaccinal antibodies, but they also have no longer, they can no longer rely on their innate immunity. Why is this? Well, I, I told you previously that despite the fact that these antibodies will no longer prevent the virus from interacting with the receptor on the cell. They, their binding will still be strong enough to the spike protein to outcompete the natural antibodies. So you're left with nothing. If, 
if you, you would not ha get the vaccine or you would not have the, these antibodies, you would still be able to rely on the only ally that is left, which is your innate immunity. And so uh, I think this is really the core of, uh, of my message that uh, antigen specific antibodies, they may be, they can be detrimental, especially in people who have or in good health, because people who are in good health, they can rely on their innate immunity provided, provided they get regularly exposed why I'm saying this? Because the innate immunity has no memory. It's like you're sitting on your chair for like three weeks, your muscles are gonna wane, you, you know, I mean, it is the same with the innate immune response. It, your innate immunity, if it's not trained, if you, if, you, if you don't go out, if you're not exposed, if you're locking young people, etc., their innate immune, uh, immune system will not be trained. But if you're in good health and you train this, you will have a strong innate immunity what is the advantage? For God's sake, innate immunity protects against all variants, against all coronavirus. So it is incredibly precious. So you cannot put this uh, at stake. It's, it's just in, uh, impossible. So uh, Jean-Pierre, I think we can, uh, well, the, 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 the rest of the slides will be very, very fast because, um, yeah, prophylactic vaccines are for use in conventional. Yeah, well, th this, is, th this is the other thing I'm saying, of course. So what is happening right now? What is happening right now is I told you we are in a war and uh, do we know our enemy? Well, I was just saying we, we don't even understand the pathophysiology or the immune patholo uh, pathology of, of the virus. That, that is our enemy. We don't understand. We, we don't know our enemy, in other words. We don't understand the natural course of a pandemic. Uh, so we don't understand what is the strategy of this war, what is going on in this war. and then. We come with a weapon that uh, we don't use properly. Why I'm saying this? Well, all of the vaccines that are right now, not in the pipeline, but are already rolled out, are prophylactic vaccines. What do I mean with prophylactic vaccine? A prophylactic vaccine is typically a vaccine that you should not use while the individual is exposed to a huge infectious pressure. We are in the midst of the pandemic, guys. So that means that if you are vaccinating somebody while this person is at risk of being exposed to the virus, you get a huge problem. First of all, you, are, you, you may not be able to protect that person because be, before you have the full-fledged developed immune response, this person may already be infected and hence you, know, you can no longer protect them. Secondly, imagine, you vaccinate somebody who is at risk of being exposed, he may already or she may already be incubating the disease. And then you come with a vaccine. Well, very often, especially with live vaccines, which is not the case here, that is not do, do, doing very, very good to the, to the patient. But the third thing is, when you vaccinate somebody in the midst of a pandemic, whilst being exposed to the virus, you are, having a high likelihood that this person while developing this immune response is going to face the pathogen and hence the pathogen will be confronted with a suboptimal immune response that is happening with all the people who got for example their first dose and then wow they just go back into the pandemic guys uh, exposed to the virus etc their immune response is not is not mature yet so it's suboptimal so this is really asking for, for, for immune escape. So what I'm saying is that we don't know our, our enemy. We don't understand this, the strategy in this war. We don't use our weapon, the vaccines, properly. And hence, we are sending thousands and millions of people uh, to, the, to the front line, uh, in, in the trenches. And we have no plan B. And I mean, I can tell you, this is the first time in the history of mankind that we are we humans are intervening in such a massive way with massive infection prevention measures with massive vaccination campaigns where there is plenty of opportunity as i try to explain you for the virus to be facing suboptimal immune responses and to escape and that is why i'm saying and i'm scientifically convinced of this 
that this we are making of a virus that was initially pretty harmless, we are making really a kind of monster of this virus because the more we chase it, the more it will become infectious. And this is right now already, you know, beginning starts already, to, you know, to be to be a disaster. And I'm telling people, you know, who are not listening, scientists, top scientists, health authorities, I'm telling them, well, look at those countries who have their successful mass vaccination campaigns implemented, like the UK, like Israel, like Gibraltar, and 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 very soon also the US. You see the declines, of course, you have an effect, but for sure, after this decline, you will see a huge wave, a huge wave of uh, disease and 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 unfortunately also mortalities. Despite, despite the fact that these countries are going to increase, to further increase their vaccine coverage. So then when people will see that despite increased vaccine coverage, 60, 70, 80 percent of population, all we get is increased rates of mortality and morbidity, then people will probably realize, responsibles will probably realize, oh my gosh, something went wrong here. But what do you think? I mean, if you intervene on a massive, on a large scale in this pandemic, there is only two possible outcomes. Either you have a fantastic effect or you have you, you generate a disaster. And I